Buddha's no self doctrine. So we have Nagasena who goes to speak with a king. And when he speaks to the king, he asks the king to address him as Nagasena. But he says to the king that regardless of the name that he uses, it is but a way of counting, a term, an appellation, a convenient designation, a mere name, for there is no self. Not surprisingly, the king questions Nagasena and asks, if there is no self, then who provides the priests with robes, food, bedding, and medicine, and the reliance of the sick? Who uses these things? Who keeps the precepts? Who meditates? Who commits immorality? Who tells lies? Now, the implication, if there is no self, and both king, the king and Nagasena are well aware of this, if there is no self, then there is no merit. There is no demerit because there is no one who does deeds that are worthy of merit and no one who does deeds that are bad. So if there is no one to do anything, neither good nor evil deeds can have any result. One who kills a priest would not be a murderer because there is no one to kill and there is no one to be killed. The priest can have no teacher, no preceptor, no ordination, because there is no self. Now then, Nagasena and the king go through sort of an argument by elimination. And again, you might recall from previous uh, discussions that an argument by elimination occurs when someone takes, you know, all the possibilities and essentially eliminates them, gets rid of them, and then says, well, if all the possibilities you know, are eliminated, there is no possibility. So what Nagasena and the king are doing here essentially is eliminating the self. So they go through all the possibilities, eliminate them, so there's no possibility, so no self. So what do they consider? Well, they consider that perhaps Nagasena is the, you know, physical things. It goes through, you know, in great detail hair of the head or body, nails, teeth, skin, flesh, sinew, bones, marrow, kidneys, heart, liver, blood, sweat, fat, tears, saliva, snot, urine, or brain. Uh, so none of the physical stuff. So the first thing rejected is the body. Then considers form, which is also simply rejected. Then to sensation, consciousness, uh, perception, predispositions, or all these things united. And those are all rejected. Then everything else. So pretty much everything is covered. Basically body, all the mental stuff, those are all rejected. And then what about everything else? And that's rejected too. And so the king draws the obvious conclusion. He has not discovered any Nagasena. Nagasena is a mere empty sound. There is no Nagasena. This does create a bit of a problem, though, because in Buddhism, a key part of Buddhism is the notion of rebirth. But rather too simply, that is this. Uh, we really can't say exist, but we'll say it anyways. We exist in a world of illusion, and we suffer here. And what happens is we're, we're tied to this world by our desires, chained to them. And we suffer you know, throughout our life, we die because of our connection to the world of illusions, we reincarnate, and then we suffer some more. So a key part of Buddhism is this rebirth, this constant reincarnation. And sort of the end game of Buddhism is to achieve nirvana, not the, not the band, but the original, which is literally a state of no wind. And so the idea is we have to realize that there is no self, and we do this... Um, we achieve this nirvana by ceasing all desires, even the desire to desire. And then we realize it's all an illusion, and then we never were, so we never are. So, again, kind of an interesting concept that there is nothing, uh, yet we have to escape the nothing. So how does this rebirth take place that's so essential to classical Buddhism? And... You know, the king and Nagasena consider this. So the king asked, how does this occur? You know, how does this rebirth occur without there being any self to transmigrate? 
And what Nagasena does is, of course, use two analogies, because that's what philosophers do. The first analogy is to light, lighting a candle. And Nagasena claims that if you were to light a candle from another candle, the one light would have not passed over, transmit, transmigrated to the other. And he says, in exactly the same way does rebirth take place. Now, there's some obvious criticisms of this analogy, because any analogy, again, is comparing two things to say they're alike in certain ways, so they're alike in this other way. And they're criticized in terms of number of similarities, relevance of the similarities, and any relevant dissimilarities. And this analogy, like all analogies, could be picked apart. Because when, you know, a light is, trans is you know, if you light a light from another light, in a way you are transferring something, namely heat energy. And so this could be criticized. The second analogy is poetry, learning poetry from a teacher. And Nagasena says the verse did not pass over, you know, you know, to uh, the person learning it from the teacher. And he says, you know, by analogy, rebirth takes place the same way. And on one hand, you could say yes, but on the other hand, information, of course, is transferred. And always analogies can be can be criticized. So for the Buddha, there is no self. And so in terms of personal identity, in regards to Buddhism, the answer is there is no self. There's no identity across time because there is no self. And again, this does lead to kind of the interesting you know, paradox or problem of how do you have rebirth and suffering without there being a self, but that is the, the no-self doctrine.